Hello, it's another KB meeting. I put the link to the Etherpad in Pound Sumo. Uh, I, I realized this morning, like an hour before this, that it was actually Thursday and this meeting was happening today. So I did not yeah. send this out ahead of time. Um, uh, so, and I stuck some, some stuff on here. I stuck a thing on here at the end for Kadir that he didn't know about, but he can wing it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Kadir, so we had from last time, Kadir filing a bug about putting can responses on localized dashboards. And there's a bug. Yep. And it's uh, planned for the next sprint. Okay. And can you remind us what the heck that was? What was the deal? I don't so remember. yeah, we wanted to, so right now, <laughs> So right now we have canned responses in the forum, um, and and they actually have articles, but it's not clear where those articles are or how, how to get to them, and especially for localization, that is an issue. Uh, so we're going to add a section to the localization dashboard uh, about those canned responses, because right now there are like 30 pages of them uh, for the English forum. And, um, so this will only be shown to those uh, forums that are, uh, sorry, only to those locales that have a forum with us. Currently, that's only uh, Brazilian Portuguese. Awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. OK. Anything else about, uh, about that bug? Uh, no, it's, I think, simple enough. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I remember we talked all about this last week now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Roland to change the template. Done. Yes. Uh, in a awesome. rare feat of non procrastination. Cool. Um, Michael to create a sumo page. So I created a sumo page and I put one link on there because I did it again. I realized, like, oh no, I haven't done the things for the meeting like uh, just a little while ago. So I did it super quick. And um, the idea is to. Flush this page, flush this page out with more information, and um, I should uh, work with Rosanna to do that. That kind of who's taking what document thing idea that she had, because um, we should also. Oh, this uh, this also reminds me because it's also about uh, these are these documents are being worked on by these people. They're going to be done by this time so that they can be localized, right? Which reminds me about the localization thing. I think some of you talked yesterday about localizing or sometime this last week about localizing the Firefox OS articles. And so I didn't put this on here, but Rosanna, do you have any information about that, what we're doing? or? Because we should probably add it to this. This should also be stuff on this page, right? I think you're yeah, muted. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, I, I totally think so. I mean, I, I was talking to Michelle, and um, because all the Firefox OS stuff is also like happening uh, in a different cycle, let's right. say, than the, than, the, than the usual Firefox OS releases. I also asked Michelle to create a, a, also like a project page. So okay. she's also working on it. So basically, uh, my idea would be that we have one, one single page, you know, like, like the mother of all. Yep. Um, or, where, you know, we link to the different uh, uh, um, products, yep. right? Um, and there we have all the documents being worked. Uh, and we have like an extra ether pad where people can assign themselves things so that, you know, it doesn't have to go through the whole, you know, approval process on the KB. Um, right. That would yeah. be the idea. Yeah. Cool. So that's me to create that. I was, I was working with Michelle on a structure that makes sense and maybe like to propose that structure if you haven't thought of one for the, for the, for the Firefox, for, for, for desktop and also for Roland for Android. Uh, but that's basically the idea. What's the matter, Kadir? I'm sorry, one of my browser windows started playing oh. a sound, and I was like, what the? A sound. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay, something else. I, w- I thought that was a reaction Sorry. to what Rosanna was saying. I was like, no, 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 that no, sounds not at all. perfectly reasonable to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just when you have headphones on and something loud oh. comes on and you're like, <laughs> Okay. Sorry. So, no, no, no. So an action item is to uh, is to uh, keep flushing that. Um, uh, oh my God, this is for everybody. Maybe start creating those pages. Maybe by next week, I should have created all of those pages so that we can review the structure together if we want. Okay. Um. Next was a thing about, oh, I saw you posted about this. Uh, next steps for creating KB groups. Can you update us on? Uh, so I was, I was following the threads, and um, it seems to be that there's general consent. So what I wanted to do is like to ask people if they were OK if we started like implementing this uh, fast. Like, I, I want to have like an idea, like, does anyone have any concerns if we do this fast? You know, this is your time to speak. Um, no one has said anything, so I think that we we gave them the time to you know say yep. their concerns if they thought that this was going to be too fast, and I think that we could start creating the groups and and implementing them. I just wanted to 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 have that extra sort of like okay we're going to do this. Um, any concerns like last chance to voice them, so that it doesn't feel that okay wait uh, when did you know was this a decision? That was like sort of my my take on that. So I posted it. I would give them a, a maybe until next week, and then we can create the groups and start moving the permissions. And the permissions was there. Did we f- see anything that wasn't um, right, or or do, or do we think we're gonna have to file a bug for something? Yes, there's one bug that we need to file. Uh, Ricky was a little reluctant at the beginning, but I think that now he understood pretty much what we had in mind. Um, and uh, it seems to be that that it's uh, he thought we were gonna like change everything, uh, but it's just one permission that needs to get um, a bit uh, changed. So we're on the where that's gonna be easy to implement. Cool. Um, oh, I lost my page. Where are we? Um, let's get all the videos on YouTube. So um, I know where all the desktop ones are. I have them, oh, right. I have all the desktop things uploaded to YouTube. I probably don't have them all replaced in articles. So I'll double check that, I, that I've done that. But actually, Roland, if yeah. you can, and if you can ask Michelle to just give yeah. me links to what articles have mobile articles have videos, I'll get the, I can get the videos and upload them to YouTube and add them to the articles. It's not a big job. Just send me links and I'll take care of it. Okay. This was a previous action that I never did. Okay. Um, and then what else? This way we can get off of, uh, this way Ricky can remove code. Remove code. That also seemed to be a big thing. At this, I went to this conference, which I, I should mention in a little bit, but, but um, I, I got that uh, developers are very excited about removing code. They get they get super excited when it, they can do that. It means less maintenance work and uh, fewer things that can actually break right. when you change things. Yeah. So, and of course they're lazy. That's why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we hope that that's why they write good code because they're lazy and they don't want to rewrite it. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> Um, uh, the last thing I had on here is, um, the, so this opt, so here's the thing. I don't know if we said this last meeting. So we wanted to try this, uh, optimizely test of collapsible sections in an article. Um, and we tried to set it up last week and it turned out optimizely was having a lot of trouble with our like show for and, um, what else? Lazy loading and all kinds of stuff. So I think we came up with a workaround, but um, last I talked to Kadir, we were having trouble uh, pinpointing it to the right users to test. 
and is that still the case or what's going on? Any any news? Mickey, are you still on? Yep, what's up? So what about the idea of uh, putting the optimize the uh, script uh, up front um, for our testing purposes? Do you have a better idea to make the show for work or is that the only option? Uh, well, I don't know because I think we need to look at the, uh, the optimize the documentation to see what other options we have. So what about doing it without the show for? Like I had set it up with all the, like just, oh, yeah. just Windows 7. Yeah, if you do that, then we're, we're um, if you do it like right. that in an article that has no show for, it, it, that would be the best case. Well, the issues that we have is that we can't, uh, Michael, I, I couldn't actually we can't do, do it. it that so way. there's no way to, no, there's no way to uh, pinpoint it to specific users of like Firefox on Windows, Firefox 20 on Windows. That, that uh, optimize it just doesn't have the capability. And we can't do that. Oh, and we can't, yeah, okay, I see. I tried, I tried custom uh, JS, but no. Huh. It's limited. You can uh, the the most I can get it to do is uh, say only for Firefox twenty, but then you can't specify the operating system. Got it. So we need to find a way to make optimizely work with the show for. So I mean, as as if, there's, if, if there's a way to tell optimizely after you've done your stuff, run this other code, then we should be fine. But I haven't looked at any documentation or anything, so I assume there should be a way. Because even if we put it on, time. even if we put it up front, it's not guaranteed that it's going to work. Because because you, you don't know what Oracle all those things are going to fire. Because it's based off window load. So what if we put the show for code as part of the optimizely global JavaScript? Like say, run this JavaScript and then also run the show for again. Oh, so you can do that? Well, I, I mean, don't know. I didn't know if you could do that. Yeah, Maybe. you can do that. So you can specify code for optimizing to run after they've done their thing? It's called uh, global JavaScript, and it essentially applies a specific JavaScript just for that use case, just for that test. Oh. Well, well if we can do that and, and, and it runs after the, it replaced the, the content, then it should be fine. Let's try that. Okay. Should be easy All you to have test. to do is How can we? How can we isolate that code for uh, show for? Is that is that available somewhere, or uh, could you send it to me that I can just put paste it in and see if it works? Yeah, yeah, this should be like a one-liner. Cool. Yeah, there's just a there's a JavaScript include right in the in the uh, after the body that's just for show for. Well, well, that won't work. We we actually need the real JavaScript. Oh. Oh, you can't you we can't just it, say so. include this JavaScript. You have to go get the JavaScript. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's how, that's how well, it works. Well, you actually well, okay. put the JavaScript in there. Anyway, okay. uh, I think that that's something that we can't figure out uh, between the three yeah. of us. Okay. We don't need the full meeting. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, anything else? I see Rosanna has a question on the bottom about the technical writing program and how do we start people in the middle? Actually, there's, I have two, two points I wanted to point out. Uh, one thing is um, the um, Elton and documentation. So um, we're catching a couple of things that are in, um, documented for localization. Uh, which are like uh, when you become a reviewer, like what does it look like? Like we could, I mean, like we, we do have some documentation, but we can flesh it out a little bit more. Um, I don't know if, if we would need that too for the KB, Michael, but I was looking around and I couldn't find a whole, you know, a lot about that because usually when people become reviewers, they already know so well the platform that they don't ask um, many questions. So it's more for maybe new locales where people, you know, are kind of like not, not really familiar with it. That was the one thing, and like how to deal with templates for localization. So um, I'm basically, I'm trying to ask localizers, uh, there's a thread on the localization form, uh, what kind of documentation is missing? Um, and that's the idea to flesh that a little bit more, uh, Michael. So um, that's a little like 
right. type project I'm working on. Okay. I mean, so <clears throat> in the past, the, the localization documentation that we have, uh, Kadir, you wrote that, right? Previously. Uh, yeah. The, the... yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what we're finding is that, you know, like for, you know, like for locales where, you know, like you don't really have, like you're a new locale leader and, you know, you suddenly you have the reverse rights and you were learning, to, you know, to use the whole platform. And then you're also a, a, like a new reviewer uh, for, for them. It's uh, better to have a little bit more documentation on how to uh, be, you know, a reviewer. Yep. Um, but I think that we should also wait until, you know, we have all the reviewing things figured out in the KB, uh, but in general, like, like if you have encountered anything um, on the localization part of the, you know, of Sumo that you think that needs to get documented, just let me know. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm starting like this thing. John 99, by the way, has done a great job. He's like listing things and and commenting on on those uh, on those threads. Thanks, John, for keeping an eye on it. Um, so yeah, just just to let you know that um, um, I would like to work on that and and yeah, in general for all localizers um, like. Um, you know, tell us what needs to get uh, localized. And for any KB contributors, if you would like to help us with this, uh, if you're looking for a new side project to document something, help us document Kitsune. <laughs> right. So, right, so there's there's definitely documentation, especially as we create these new groups and, and implement all that, right? There's documentation for writing and reviewing uh, uh, English articles that needs to be updated. But yes, please, the localization part of it, please help. So, I, I mean, I generally work on this stuff about the English uh, things, I guess is what I'm saying. But I'm not right. the expert in how to, and uh, how the localization process works. I mean, I have like, I don't know, I know some things, but yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> but I don't know no, the, sure. I don't know the pitfalls. Oh my God, don't do this. You'll hate your, right, you'll right. you'll hate life if you do this. Like we have we have this thing that you know like a localizer uh, translated the titles of the templates so they break right so right. like this type of things uh, and I was looking for like wait that's on the in the documentation and I was I, that's where I figure out no, there's like a, a couple of gaps but that's yeah. that's okay I mean like it's we're we're figuring it out as it goes uh, the documentation is is good okay uh, but can make it better so that cool. was my first thing so if anyone's interested in helping us. Um, the second thing was about the technical writing program. Um, we have two new candidates. I have to get back to them, but um, I wanted to, 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 to understand first uh, what we can offer them. I, the, for the last time, we had a couple of people that were interested, and we told them we have to wait, and you know, many of them didn't come back. So it could be that you know, like, it is better to give the people interested like, something to write away. So I was wondering, uh, Michael, if there's a way to engage people, no matter when they uh, get to us. I mean, even if like the next release cycle is like four weeks away or, right. or three weeks away, like right now. Um, so one thing would be Firefox uh, OS articles right now. That could be something. Uh, maybe they could help us document in Kitsune, right? As they learn how it works, they uh, that could be like their research too. Um, um, I don't know. So I, I I wanted to ask you like what we could do so that we can give. Um, uh, tasks to people who yeah. are starting now. Um, that's a good question, and we should figure that out. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, those sound like those sound like places where there's probably something, and we should probably come. Oh, it, it's I would say like a, like an alternate plan, right? That we'll need to to write that out or document that the way that I've documented the things for the for the actual, you know, like this is the, how to get started, just write this one thing or, or, yeah. Right. Um, I'm, I think most of that can be based off of, there's already those like three, Videos, fat, yeah, right. three, three things about getting started quickly. So mm -hmm. uh, we could um, do something with that and then give them a certain task or something. Um, right. Yeah, let's talk about it afterward or something. Sure, so, right, right, right. No, that, that was like the, the other thing, um, so that we can maybe get them yeah, to do some work. Um, and then, you know, maybe there's one thing that they can do like right away, and then, you know, the proper Firefox release right. cycle is something that they will start later on. Yeah. Uh, well, there's needs changes, but 
Um, as Michael and I and, and we, we've all discussed, it can be tricky to like oh. figure out what needs changes in a needs changes when you read the needs changes. Yes. Oh yeah. This this. Like, so it's hard to start, but once you start, it's easy. But that's the hard part: getting them over that hump. Right. That reminds. Uh, so, go ahead. I'm sorry, Rosanna. Go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry, but I, I'm I'm thinking like because we have this. I mean, like we have this. Um, unique thing and which is we're documenting a whole new product which is Firefox OS like is there a way that we could get them to start documenting that before they get onto the next Firefox uh, cycle Roland um, or is that a bad why thing? not but it might be hard with it I don't know the state of the simulator in 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 Windows gotcha. Gotcha. right I can't get so it there's always work. these little catches that get you right oh it does work but um, um it does Back. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so the needs changes is something that you know you need some time to get started. Um, yeah, it also it takes research. I mean, all of it kind of takes some research. That's the way we got to think about right. it. But yeah, yeah. Also, I'm interested in this topic, so keep me in the loop, please. Uh, but really, I mean, whatever we can to make it easier, I can help somehow. I don't okay, cool. So we're trying to figure out, like, if anyone else, um, also from the people watching this um, 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 meeting, if you have any question, uh, any ideas on how we can do this, I'm gonna get back to the to the applicants, and I'm gonna tell them um, that the next uh, process starts, you know, when it starts. But that um, we're interested in, in in finding a way for them to get started uh, as soon as possible. Yep. One thing that uh, I think we have to clarify about needs changes. Um, um, so with <clears throat> the scrappy solution is to add your name to the needs changes list when you add something, like who added this to the list? Because what I've seen recently is people adding things to the needs changes list, yes, but some that I really disagree with. Like, oh, we don't, I, we don't need that added to the article and then people go edit it because it was in the needs changes list and then I'm like oh now I just want to take this out um, and I would like to talk to I am like I don't know who added this I would like <coughs> to be able to talk to so we're on yeah, the also, same so we're all on the same page about what types of things get added should we you know right and that that would also make it easier to give the needs changes to people who are are waiting to get started on the next firefox release cycle because they could contact someone in the community and ask hey you wrote this needs changes uh what what's are you talking about right exactly yeah same thing yeah. also this is a general thing about review about a revision comments if you're watching please don't put revision comments like i changed some stuff a few changes a little bit of changes um because that doesn't mean anything. That's the same as leaving it blank. Please list what you changed. I fixed broken links. I added a new section about something. I changed the introduction. Some some idea okay. what you changed. Right. Maybe we can, Michael. Maybe it makes sense to have uh, because I think that that must be, that that could be you know challenging for some people. Like when you when you when you edit articles and when you when you review them, um, you know. You know exactly this type of communication that you have in the two. Maybe we can have some sort of best practices or ideas of how, how to make this, and this would be you know absolutely part of it. Yeah. Maybe you can list all of this in a form thread and and then make yeah. it a part of the general documentation. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I'm just saying. <laughs> the thing that really helps is if you uh, before you submit your revision, you can click on the show differences and it shows the diff and you can go, oh yes, I changed this, I changed this, I changed this, right? And so that you can write a list of, because sometimes I'll work on an article over the course of a day, like I'll work on it five minutes and I'll come back and I'll work on it and then I'll come back and I'll change some more stuff. And then I've forgotten all the things that I've changed. But the, like the diff thing will show you Oh yes, I always find things I forgot that I changed in there. But right, um, right. I noticed that I was looking at articles. I was trying to see what was changed to like review them, and I, I saw lots of comments that were essentially no comment. Some things I changed some things. 
Right, right, right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, maybe, maybe that's also something that that we could start documenting. It's, it's like I, I've been like going through through the documentation. I think that we have already a very ba you know the we have a very solid uh, base, but you know there's yeah. always here and there some stuff. We add new features here and there, and we can we can totally document yeah. them. I mean, I know so, yeah. somewhere it says like what to put in that comment, but it probably doesn't stress that how important that is for the right. reviewer, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't be a hipster programmer and put in, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Oh, I changed the thing. It's so awesome. Not. Right. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the good of society. <laughs> so that's what you put, Roland, right? No, no. I've just imagined these things. I, I'm anal retentive. I've been accused of putting too much detail on my commit things. Not by Michael. <laughs> yeah. But it will happen. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Uh, perfect. Yeah, err on the side of detail because it's a great way of skimming. When, I look at, when, when people look at the history, a lot more than you would think of an article. At least I do. I obsess over that history. <laughs> okay, so we'll, well, probably you should like. Uh, write that documentation or make a video, Roland. Hi, I'm Roland. I'm obsessed about article history. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I suppose I could. I should. I mean, I bought this ScreenFlow program. It's pretty awesome. Okay, you can give me an action item and I'll do it. But first, I'm going to do Michael's videos because I feel really guilty about cool. that. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, well, I mean, when Michael's you're ready with Michael's videos, right. Michael's videos was. Uh, you will do the 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 how, how to live comments. Uh, no, he's talking about giving me a list of articles that have videos in them. I'm going to do that first, and then I will write up in the appropriate place to be determined of what we just talked about, uh, which is how to leave nice. Uh, what do you call the sub commit changes or whatever when you update an article? Yeah, review comments. Review revision comments. comments. Yeah. Division comes. Thank you. Cool. Matt, did you just add consolidated search prefs? Yeah, sure. Well, this I is awesome. I was talking about this to, at the conference. I listed oh, nice. this as a user accuracy thing. I was like, Yeah, so this is part of our uh, ongoing squeaky initiative with the uh, AMO team, right? So the, the problem is right now, if somebody gets their search hijacked, we've got like 15 different search preferences. <laughs> that all need to be fixed for you to re really recover from it. So uh, even if you change the default search and the, the search bar back, uh, your search is still hijacked everywhere else. That's the only so, one with a UI. All yeah, the exactly. others don't have UI for else, changing. You have to go to about config to do it, and uh, it, it's just a pain. So uh, what we've done is we've consolidated all these preferences. It just landed in nightly. We're hoping to uplift so that it'll be in uh, like 22 probably. Um, so be looking for that but it will need some documentation yeah. probably um, it'll make it much easier so uh, hopefully the documentation will be uh, really easy to to get done um, but we're really going to be pushing for this this is going to be awesome and it should significantly cut down traffic to the uh, support site as well so uh, people will be able to self recover from uh, you know Babylon and uh, ask and all of these other um, things that mysteriously show up on their computers so I mean, if you've noticed, I know the the changes that we've gotten Babylon to do have resulted in, you know, I mean, that article is still really popular, but it's yeah, not yeah. it's not as popular as it was. It's right. slowly yeah. moving down the yeah. charts, you know. Yeah. So um, that reminds me, Michael. I know we discussed this before, but if you could send me the information um, from the last uh, uh, add-ons presentation that we had done, how you aggregated that data. Oh, right. If you could send me the steps for that because we're going to redo all of those numbers so that we can measure just you know how much of an impact we've had so far okay um and then throughout this project we're going to keep measuring and, and seeing you know just uh how much of an impact we're really having yep cool um what else is going on anything else to talk about No. This should be. This is cool. This is a half-hour meeting. How awesome is that? What a deal! Yeah. All right.
you get a half hour back to your life. Ooh, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Talk to you guys later. Ciao.